This week on ANN, Adventist leadership votes to suspend the Record Keeper web series and agrees to explore possibilities of new creative outreach projects. An upcoming training event designed to help church employees respond to victims of abuse. And a five-month search for a missing Adventist doctor in the U.S. comes to a tragic end. These stories and more coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the Seventh-day Adventist World Church leadership announced their decision to suspend the release of the 11-episode web series called The Record Keeper. The web series follows the story of two angels who struggle to maintain their friendship after universal civil war breaks out, while another angel records a record of the events. Adventist leadership also agreed to explore the possibility of backing similar creative outreach projects that are faithful to Scripture and Seventh-day Adventist ideals. The Church's Biblical Research Institute provided biblical analysis of some problematic and theologically inaccurate matters raised in the web series. Leaders said they were also looking for a stronger portrayal of fundamental Adventist beliefs, including the love of God, the creation of a perfect world, the plan of salvation and the final renewal of heaven and earth as recorded in the Bible. Church leaders remain committed to producing creative material that is in harmony with scripture to reach people who may never be impacted by traditional evangelism. Women's ministries leaders are set to host a four-day conference to train church employees to respond to victims of abuse. Church and school administrators, pastors, and teachers will learn how to help and support abuse victims in their congregations and communities at the second annual End It Now Summit on Abuse. Church leaders and healthcare professionals will present numerous topics including preventing child abuse and how to spot abuse and abusers. The Adventist Church is ahead of other religious organizations in promoting awareness of this issue to bring healing and hope. Since 2001, the Church has sponsored an Abuse Prevention Emphasis Sabbath on the fourth Saturday of August. This issue is heavily promoted throughout the World Church. The summit will take place at the Seventh-day Adventist World Church headquarters in the U.S. state of Maryland from May 1st through 4th. For more information, go to enditnow.org. We have an unfortunate update in the story of the Adventist doctor in the United States who went missing five months ago. Last week, a body discovered in a lake in the U.S. state of Indiana was confirmed to be Talika Patrick. After the body was identified, Patrick's parents requested a second autopsy, which revealed her death was the result of drowning. We previously reported that Patrick was last seen December 5th after leaving work at the Borges Medical Center in Michigan, where she was in her first year of residency. This story made local and national headlines and captured attention of the global Adventist community. A funeral service will be held April 25th at the Mount Sinai Seventh-day Adventist Church in Orlando, Florida. An Adventist missionary pilot was killed in an airplane accident at the Adventist Aviation Indonesia, or AAI, headquarters in Papua, Indonesia last week. Bob Roberts, along with several passengers on board, died when the plane crashed during takeoff. Adventist Mission prepared the following video to honor Roberts' lifetime of service. My name is Bob Roberts and my job is mission pilot. Bob Roberts lives and works in Papua, Indonesia. He's been flying with Adventist Aviation Services in Indonesia for more than 20 years. He's seen all kinds of things and met thousands of people hungry to learn about Jesus. On a typical morning, Bob gets up, checks to make sure everything is okay with the plane and climbs in for a ride. He delivers supplies, visits villages, and transports people throughout the many islands of this region. If you look on the map, you'll see that the island is split in half. 
The eastern side is the country of Papua New Guinea, while the western half is part of Indonesia. Here in Papua, there are huge mission challenges. The first obstacle is getting to the people. The terrain here is extremely rough. Mountains, rivers, and dense jungle make it nearly impossible to walk through. To reach some of these villages by foot, it can take weeks of hiking and chopping through this terrain. That's where Adventist Aviation Services comes to the rescue. Trips that used to take weeks now take hours, thanks to Bob's flying. These islands contain more than 500 language groups. You can imagine how difficult it is to reach so many languages in an area made up of hundreds of islands. Almost 90% of these people have never even heard the gospel. Bob flies to reach the unreached. He has been flying for the Seventh-day Adventist Church for almost 40 years now. He spent a number of years flying in Africa before coming to Indonesia. His experience in the air is extremely valuable to the mission work in Indonesia. This is where he feels at home and where God has called him to fly. When visiting this small city in West Papua, Bob discovered that the local Adventist pastor's father was very sick and had no way to see him. If he took a boat to visit his father, it could take days. The pastor was very disappointed that he may never see his father again. Bob offered to fly him to the nearby city to visit his father. With the services of the Adventist aviation plane, the pastor was able to see his father again and share encouraging words with him. Bob often transports sick people to get medical attention. Many of the small cities and villages have no medical facilities. Commercial planes rarely or never fly some places. Even with small commercial planes, it is very expensive for a villager to afford a ticket. We fly a lot of sick people, and uh, when we do fly sick people, we fly them for free if they're really sick. Bob's flying is a ministry. He cares about the people he visits. He wants to bring the message and hope of Jesus to the people of Indonesia. So those are the kind of things that make you glad you're a mission pilot, helping people that would not have a hope otherwise. Adventist humanitarians and volunteers from Loma Linda University spent a week providing health services in Sri Lanka, an island country off the southern coast of India. The mission project was a collaborative effort with local government agencies to promote public health. An 18-member team from the Loma Linda University Students in Mission Service program partnered with the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Sri Lanka to hold dental and medical clinics last month. The program is a Loma Linda University initiative that advances the university's commitment to global service and incorporates service opportunities into the academic curriculum. The volunteers provided multiple services, including birth control clinics, free checkups and medicine, and tuberculosis testing. The volunteers also funded the extension of a local elementary school. Construction for the school will be completed by the end of the month. And finally in the news this week, hundreds of Pathfinders gathered at an Adventist Academy in the U.S. state of Maryland for an annual Bible Bowl. The Pathfinders tested their knowledge of the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel for the final round of the Bible Trivia Competition. Eighty-eight teams competed at the Tacoma Academy High School to represent their local churches and conferences. The Pathfinders had an opportunity to showcase their Bible knowledge and fellowship with one another while participating in a spirit-filled program. Coming up, how too much religion can pose an even bigger problem to our global community than growing secularity. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather all the Jews who are in Susa together, and pray and fast for me. Do not eat or drink anything for three days and nights. I and my maidens will fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish.
Welcome back. In this week's feature for Liberty Magazine, Lincoln Steed shares how the world needs an increase of spirituality more than an abundance of religions that seek power and control. Many commentators looking at today's world see a problem with secularity, particularly people of religious faith in the United States. But I believe when you look at the global dynamic, secularity is not the problem, it's religion. There is way too much religion at work in the world today. In Liberty Magazine, we're often trying to make that distinction. Religion without the spirituality easily leads to a, see a, 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 a seeking of political power, a control, a taking back of America for religion. That's the wrong sort of religion, even if it was taken back for it. What each of us need to aim for is an inner spirituality that moderates and controls our interpersonal relationships that leads to godliness, to kindness, to peace and, and security all around the world. That is the ultimate religious liberty. An Adventist church in the West African country of Benin was recently given land to build the country's first Adventist school. Adventist Mission Editor Nancy Kite shares the story behind this gift and the ways you can support the construction of the school. About 10 years ago, a young global mission pioneer went to live in the city of Paraku in the country of Benin. The city was surrounded by villages with communal farms. It must have been daunting at first, knowing that there was no other Seventh-day Adventist presence in this area at that time. The first thing our pioneer did was to introduce himself to the young chief in that area. It wasn't long before he became acquainted with the members of the chief's council in this farming community. Who could have known how God would bless this pioneer and the people in Paraku? Today there is a church with a full-time pastor and a growing membership, but that's not all. God was working behind the scenes all along. The chief, who does not have a Christian background, decided to donate a choice piece of property so that a school can be built near their village. And guess where the first Seventh-day Adventist school in the country of Benin will be built? You guessed it, on the property that the chief has given. They know that it will be a Christian school, and they look forward to welcoming Adventist teachers who will give their children a good education. Funds from the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help complete the school and help to supply books for the children's library. Please give as generously as you can at your church, or you can donate online through our website at www.adventismission.org. Thank you for supporting missions. An upcoming short documentary produced by the General Conference Communication Department called Best Seller shows how a secular writer transformed into a truth-seeking follower of Christ. Ever since the time I was young, I always knew I wanted to be a novelist. I wanted to be a novelist or nothing. I had novelists and writers in my family. I just knew I wanted to write. I remember it. I'd write papers and I'd write things and the teachers would think, you didn't write that, did you? You know, so I just knew there was something there with that. I just wanted to say something beautiful. I just wanted to create something beautiful with words. I had started a novel my senior year at college and it just possessed me. That novel was my life. Nothing else mattered to me more than this book. And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. A new book from the Stewardship Department highlights Adventist pioneers from the 1800s and shares how their ministries can motivate us today. Penny Brink explains. Passion, Purpose and Power. It's quite a powerful title. What is this book about? Erika, this is the latest resource put out by the Stewardship Ministries Department of the World Adventist Church. It's the stories of our Adventist pioneers from the 1800s. Why would stories of Adventist pioneers from the 1800s be interesting to Adventists today? Well, they had a lot of what we need today. What do you mean by that? 
it's all in the title. They had a real passion for the spreading of the message, a message of new light discovered from studying the prophecies and studying scripture. And accordingly, they had a real sense of purpose, a sense of purpose which drove them to give their entire lives sacrificially for the spreading of the gospel. And they were also empowered by the Holy Spirit and given success in their work. Surely this is what we need today as individuals and as a church. Who compiled these stories? The editor of this book is Dr. James Nix. He is the director of the White Estate here at the World Headquarters of the Adventist Church. He has a real passion for history and how it can encourage and motivate us today in our work. Who better to compile these stories than Dr. Nix? Some of them from original sources from the actual pens of the pioneers. I'm convinced. Where can I get a copy? This book is available via our website and through Advent Source. Let me encourage you to pick up your copy. As it says on the back cover of this book, come listen and you might just hear the God of the pioneers calling your name. Still ahead, customizing your electronic Bible study cards. But up next, addressing the deterioration of women's health around the world. I pray for uh, that I hope everybody to be good every day. I pray that I can listen to the teacher and I can learn. I pray for my dog because he's he like he's in pain and I pray for my dad's back. Imagine nothingness, only darkness. Suddenly a strong voice speaks. Let there be light, and immediately there was light. Who is this voice? Who can command light out of darkness? He continues day after day bringing into existence the atmosphere, the seas, and everything in them, setting the earth, the sun, moon, and stars in their courses, creating life, plants, birds, animals, and finally a man and a woman. Some say it's a fairy tale, but perhaps that's because they haven't heard his voice, the voice that can create something from nothing. That is the voice of our wonderful Creator, the one who is the giver of all good gifts. Why not accept His gift of creation and the knowledge of Him today? I know I'm looking for something, but what? Peace? Purpose? Meaning? I'm still not sure. But I know it's going to take faith. More than 350 million people suffer from depression. This affects people of all ages, races and gender, but especially women. The Adventist Church has prepared mental health training to address this growing issue. Women's Ministries Director Heather Dawn Small explains. Health is one of the six issues that impact women globally. But despite considerable progress in the past decades, the world continues to fail to meet the health care needs of women at key moments of their lives, particularly in their adolescent years and older age. Poor health undermines a woman's ability to be a fully productive participant in God's work. Globally, the health of women is deteriorating. This process is closely aligned to environmental deterioration, declining agricultural productivity, and social demands on women, particularly in poor countries, for the production of large numbers of children. Women's Ministries helps women in their churches and in their communities in many ways. Nutrition, health, and mental health seminars are outreach topics which can benefit many. Currently, we are focusing on mental health. Why? Because it is a topic rarely discussed. Many in our churches suffer from various mental health problems, but do so in secret. 
According to the World Health Organization, globally more than 350 million people of all ages suffer from depression. This is a common problem among women today. Depression is a leading cause of disability worldwide and is a major contributor to the global burden of disease. More women are affected by depression than men. So as a department, we are preparing a series of 10 seminars meant to educate and also to bring to the forefront a vital topic. We will be launching this mental health training for women called Thinking Well, Living Well in our global conference in Geneva in July of this year. Our prayer is that God will give us hearts of compassion and love for those in need of help. Deeper understanding of this challenge as we study and strength to speak up for those he brings into our lives who need our care and concern. To know more about the six issues that impact women globally, including threats to health, go to AdventistWomen'sMinistries.org. In this week's Tech Corner, Jesse Johnson shares more information on innovative Bible study cards you can customize for your outreach projects. I previously told you about the IntelliPaper Bible study cards that actually include the Bible studies electronically on roughly business card size paper. They include the study tracker system that helps you keep track of all the Bible studies that are going on. Well, you can now create custom cards done in a variety of sizes that can include your own information. Here's an example of a product that a church decided to produce for their own area. They were able to create their own graphics for the front and back as well as decide what Bible studies and materials they wanted to present. This way they were able to create the content specifically for the folks in their local area. When the card's used, the church gets all sorts of analytic data showing all the normal stuff a website collects when you visit, like the city you're in, the time and date, the computer type, and more. This type of analytic data can be very useful in planning further evangelism outreach. Well, you can create your own cards now too. If you want to have your own card that you can hand out or mail with your own information on them, just reach IntelliPaper at IntelliPaper.info. And now, Willie and Elaine Oliver bring you this feature from Family Ministries. You know, homosexuality and the issue of alternative sexualities is a huge issue in society, but also in the church, because we deal with people in the church. Uh, just recently, in March, uh, 2014, the Seventh-day Adventist Church hosted a summit on alternative sexualities in Cape Town, South Africa called In God's Image, Scripture, Sexuality, and Society. Tell us a little bit about why we did that, Elaine. Well, I think it was important for us to do it because of the fact that it's such a pressing issue in society, but also in the church. And we recognize that there are many congregations that have members that are um, dealing with the issues of um, homosexuality and other um, sexual um, representations. So we wanted to be sure that our church leadership around the world had an awareness of the issues. And to understand, first of all, the church's position on the issue of homosexual practice, and also the appropriate response for us as church leaders, for other members, for ministers. How do we respond to members who are dealing with issues in the church? And what we wanted to convey was that the church had no option but to have a loving response and a redemptive response to members in the church who come to the church with various issues. And at the same time, the other purpose of the conference was to talk about being obedient to the Word of God. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is interested in doing what God says, and we know what God says based on His Word, a simple reading of the Word. Um, beyond that, we must create an environment that's welcoming, that's accepting, not condoning, because the church is a hospital for sinners. Every sinner, that's all of us, should feel welcome in the church. And um, so that was a reason for the conference and to educate the leadership across the board so that they're more conversant with the real issues that we're facing today in this area. Now let's turn to Benjamin Baker for a look at Adventist history. This week, the Adventist church mourns the deaths of two beloved presidents. Thank you for joining us. During this week, two U.S. presidents died tragically after having led the nation through devastating wars. 
On the afternoon of April 12, 1945, Franklin D. Roosevelt died of a massive stroke. Adventist church leaders, meeting at the World Church Headquarters in Washington, D.C. at the time, issued an official statement the next day. The General Conference Committee of Seventh-day Adventists takes action in behalf of our church, expressing deep sorrow in the passing of a great executive of our nation. We honor his memory for the entire work President Roosevelt has done in leading the nation through troublous times, seeking to establish the way of freedom of thought and life for all. We mourn this loss of a strong administrator and express sympathy with Mrs. Roosevelt and the family, praying that God's comfort may be theirs in sorrow. The following day, but 80 years earlier in 1865, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. In response, this statement was voted at the GC session. Whereas Abraham Lincoln, the noble-minded and upright chief magistrate of this nation, has fallen by the hand of an assassin, resolved that we hereby record our deep distress at the loss of this prince and great man who was struck down by his enemies at the very moment when he was studying how to forgive them all, and that we recognize in this most atrocious crime the true character of the slaveholder's rebellion. And that was this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh day Adventist Church. In the meantime, find us on Facebook. You can connect with other Adventists worldwide and find links to more stories, photos, and videos. Just visit Facebook slash Adventist News. Our good news for this week comes from Psalm 33, verses 4 and 5. The passage says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.